Today is Wednesday, July 13th, 2 o'clock, and this is a public meeting of the Rockland Board of Sewer Commissioners. It is a working session for the Sewer Commissioners only. The public is welcome to attend. Uh, the, um, excuse me, the agenda has been posted on Town Hall, and we are videotaping this for later playback on WRPS. With that, I'll take a motion to open the meeting. I'll make the motion. Wait second. a second. All in favor, Mr. DeRoss? Yes. Ms. Valley? Yes. And Mr. Hessian is a yes. That is unanimous. The meeting is now open. Um, per discussion with Attorney Clifford, uh, excuse me, John, uh, Chris Kenny, uh, the commissioners are allowed under the open meeting law to take their own minutes. Uh, we designate one person to take those minutes. Um, and, they, and the only uh, requirement is that they be posted in a timely manner. The timely manner is, I believe, is 30 calendar day or 30 business days of the meeting's date. So with that, Sherry, you're going to take that? I will volunteer. Okay, yes. Sherry, Va Sherry uh, Valley will take the minutes and post them. I would, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to note that this taking of the minutes by myself is only for our working sessions. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry, that is for the working sessions only. All right, the items for discussion at this meeting will be the EPA draft order, uh, the superintendent, open superintendent position, and discussion of um, allowed connections under the moratorium. With that, I'll open the discussion on the EPA draft order. With that, I would like to tell the public that that draft order is just that at this point in time. Uh, the commission and the attorneys have a red line uh, draft, which is due to be formalized this week. Uh, there were no real corrections to it. Um, when the draft first came out, I had made a, a list of um, responses to each of the items and they were uh, granted mostly across the board with the, the, with the exception of one and we'll, we'll get into that now. What I also did is I prepared a compliance order timeline which gives us the dates of the, the things that they wanted. Uh, and I'm going to ask the board, the rest of the board members to jump in if I'm wrong. The, I guess the key to this order will be our compliance to our I&I &I, uh, commitments. Uh, what, one of the things they were specific on at the meeting is that we've never uh, formally quantified the I&I &I amounts uh, removed or discovered. So what we're going to do is we're starting with uh, the SSES study that was completed in September of 2021, which found approximately 219,000 gallons of INI, of which 67,500 is there for the basically taken or, or the, the work to be done on it. Um, the reason we opted to separate that 67,500 from the balance of the 153 with some of that 153,000 would require us to go into private property, and I'd rather have the time to discuss that with the attorneys. So with that said, uh, the board has voted and accepted, jump in if I'm wrong, to before we allow any further additional flow into the system, we are going to remove 67,500 gallons of INI that was identified um, in sewers in Maine, sewer covers in Maine. Um, we had discussed that in April with the interim superintendent. Um, they had indicated at that time that ACOM was not interested in doing the work. We had further discussions about putting it out to bid. Um, the board voted, and may we discuss uh, preparing scopes of work for that bid. Uh, they should be ready by the July meeting. Uh, that scope of work will go out for, for three seal bids, opened at the August meeting, and hopefully we select the bidder and go on with that. Um, anybody have anything to mention on that? No. Sure. That um, the ban on connecting, that does not count what we had approved. No, 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 no. What, what we had, and I think everyone's aware of that, we'll be getting that later on in the meeting. Uh, that moratorium was to cover uh, people 
and applicants that were prior approved up to July 1, 2021. The exception was made at the last meeting for the um, Primrose School. Uh, due to some entanglements, it would have led to a lawsuit against the town. Some miscommunication, not by this board, uh, that allowed them to continue building under the premise that they would get a permit rather than face a complicated lawsuit that, in many opinions, the town would not have won. We opted to grant them the one-time only connection and as was with EPA approval that it is a one-time exception to the moratorium. Other than that, now that we have the draft moratorium, we'll be probably making modifications, to, excuse me, the EPA draft order, we will be making modifications to our moratorium to fit this order, but that's down the road. Um, some of the highlights of the compliance order was that by August of 22, we've got a plan and schedule to implement the work described in the summary of the 2021 ACOM SSES report. That requires just a written letter to the EPA telling them of our intentions and hopefully have a name of a vendor that will, that will be doing that work and a timeline for that work to begin and, and end. Um, a lot of this work has to be done at low flow times, so it's probably going to, well, I know it will stretch into uh, 2023 before another connection. I'm looking at probably, um, probably June of next year before any connections would be allowed. Uh, that's just a guesstimate. I don't want to be held on to that until we get the, the scope of work complete. Another item on that is on, on September 1st of this year, we have to submit an updated scope of service to the CWMP, um, which they want, the EPA wants us to include additional studies to identify INI sources, which were not addressed in the SS ACOM study. Uh, they want us to look at things such as inline storage during peak, line, peak flows, offline storage for peak flows, uh, potential in-ground injections, that's a little complicated to explain here, but we'll try that at another meeting. Uh, all these are going to have to go off the scopes of work anyway. Identify for offline storage during peak flows, and any additional connection restrictions beyond those in the 2020 moratorium, 21 moratorium. With that said, they want to be updated on any changes we make to the moratorium um, before we approve them. I'm sure it's just for their input, and I have no problem doing that at all. Any questions before I move on to the next? In November of 2022, November 30th, and this is going to be an every six month uh, report that needs to be issued. In a reason, until further notice, beginning November 30th, 2022, and continuing every six months thereafter meaning each November and May 31st of each year. The town shall submit a semi-annual compliance report to EPA and MassDEP detailing all actions by the town in the prior six months and those actions planned for the following six months to comply with their order and to address NIPTI's permit flow violations and any other permit violations that occurred that occur within the treatment plan. Uh, that is totally not unexpected. That is, excuse me, that is um, one of the things that we were all aware that they, they, they would come down on. I will have one addition, some additional comments after, the, after this is all read in. Some of the things that the semi-annual compliance want to look at at a minimum, uh, summary listing of monthly flow violations during the six months, including a statement, of, of whether re wastewater was treated or not, the date of any bypasses to secondary or any secondary treatment we had, a detailed description of actions taken in the six months prior, meaning what did we do in the last six months to go after I and I or into into or to improve the facility. Um, they want a map of the collection system with an overlay showing where the projects are occurring, which I believe uh, we have all the maps on G GIS. 
uh, and they want to see sources that uh, and how much money we spend removing those sources individually and collectively. And these sources are going to have to detail uh, uh, flows before and after. There'll be no more guesstimates on, on what we remove. Um, okay, they want to see costs of that, description yet. They want a description of the actions taken by the town to comply with the sewer moratorium of 2021, which I guess means that if we deviate from that moratorium, we better have a damn good reason to do so. They want a table showing development projects before the sewer commission that have been approved, but are waiting for authorized to connect to the collection system, showing the revenue that we were paid for the connection, the gallons per day connected to the system, and the volume of INI that must be removed associated with that specific project. They want a table showing development projects before the sewer commission that are pending approval to connect to the solar system. Again, with the revenue, the gallons per day, and the projects that are going out. They want a spreadsheet showing the balance of money that is available, it says to the town, but I'm going to say to the sewer department, to use towards INI based INI projects based on the revenue generated from those projects. Um, they're also, and we'll be getting into it, what they want is an additional alternatives report published. That additional alternatives is to look at overall what other methods and methodology are we planning on looking at to alleviate the, the strain on the collection system. By strain, I mean the 2.5 million gallons. What efficiencies we're taking. Uh, are we looking to offload some of our flow to uh, areas such as the Mass Water Resources or to Brockton or to other municipalities. That alone is going to take quite a bit of work. Uh, I had asked for um, really a, a, a five-year window on that to do that uh, because there's a lot of engineering studies that are going to that. But, I, but what they're telling us <coughs> is that as long as we're making progressive steps towards that goal that is accepted with them. It is not saying that we have to go that route, but they want to see that we thoroughly looked at every alternative possible that we could. Uh, I've mentioned a, okay, we went there. Again, they're repeating themselves. The actions that will take can be taken during the next six months um, to address the requirements of the sort of thing. We've got to give them, okay, here's what we plan on doing the next six months. And if we don't do it, we have to explain why in writing. Uh, a description of revisions to any of the town's plans to address the INI in response to any new information that's acquired and obtained during the previous six months, meaning if the CWMP enlightens us during the study and we find that out, we've got to tell them exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to fund it, and the time frame to do that. Anybody have any comments on that one? No, I, I would suggest a separate working session to work all that out. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to need it, but I'm just trying to give everyone an update of what we've yeah. been doing. Uh, on April 30th of 2023, um, we have to submit the file to EPA, Mass DEP, the final CWMP. Again, going back to the last one, on, on May 31st of 23, the semi-annual compliance, the second one is due. On 7-1-23, we've got to submit our rate study that's in process to the EPA evaluating a full range of alternative spending scenarios on the projects related to improvements to the collection system and the wastewater treatment plant with projected impacts to the sewer rates in town. That process is, is in study, I believe, by Western Samson. On September 30th of 23, we've got to submit to the EPA and Mass DEP a plan to schedule describing what measures from the CWMP it plans on them implementing. The town shall implement such plan and schedule upon submission to the EPA subject to modifications based on the additional alternatives report. Again, we'll be getting into this more detail each meeting as we go along. I'm just trying to give everyone an update. Uh, the next one's through 53125 uh, is a semi-annual compliance due. Uh, the next one in September 30, 25, of 
would be the town development submit a plan to the EPA and Mass EP, which will include alternatives. That's our alternative, uh, additional alternatives report. That's when that'll be due. And that's with everything else. You know, what we are also, that on top of everything else that's required under our new NIPTES permit, the primary one um, is the phosphorus study, which I tried to back end onto um, the end of our permit because that is going to require a significant capital outlay of $500,000 minimum uh, that going to be in 23 or 24 now. I got to look into that uh, because we are going to need a tertiary system to treat for the phosphorus. That a tertiary means just a secondary process which is going to require a structure, equipment, and the lights. Right now we're treating it with chemicals. Uh, we're holding our own. I just spoke with Rick Katush from, from Veolia. Uh, we're holding our own, but again, um, phosphorus is impacted on the, the warmer weather and the wet, wet in the wetter spring. Now we're in the middle of a drought, so that is gonna impact that. But one thing he just brought up and I didn't think of and he didn't think of, that with the use of the chemicals, uh, it's primarily using ferric, uh, which is corrosive, um, and his people are worried that it is going to increase our copper levels, and we have a very low copper level, so that's going to take some observation. Now, what I'd like to do with this EPA compliance order is that once I get the final, we get the final draft, which I believe will be here this week or next week, and not before. Once that final draft is in, the, the final hard drop draft is in, I intend to publish it on the town website. I'll probably put a copy on Facebook, under some of the sites in town, and on the department website. Uh, what I'd like the public to do is we will be talking that on, on our ongoing meetings. I'd like the public to read it go through it, uh, we will be talking about it, and I will plan a separate meeting uh, for public input and what it means on the EPA order coming down. Now one thing I also want to add, and I, and I want to read it, so I, I want to read it right from the attorney um, thing, that the EPA attorney stated until, you know, that we were unaware until now that the EPA does plan on issuing the town some sort of fine at some point for the permit violations. They also pointed out that while the current order is an administrative order, which means we, this was an order, it's not like the yellow one, we have to comply with this one. At some point, the EPA will most likely will be seeking judicial decree judgment from the court regarding enforcement. What that will mean is that they will make it an official consent order, ordering us to do these actions. It didn't sound, does not sound like they'll be coming any time soon. They're waiting essentially to issue any further enforcement at this time because they want to witness our compliance to this order and our permit. They are working with us. They're giving us time to fish or cut bait is what it amounts to. Um, before we yes them to death, we have got to walk the walk this time. There is no um, discussion on it. The attorney did state, however, at this EPA starting uh, if we show progressive action and commitment to this, it probably would result in a, a smaller fine. But again, on the flip side to that, and this is their words, on the flip side, failure to comply will most re likely result in a larger fine. Um, so with that said, uh, the board and the town really has no alternative but to strictly adhere to this order, strictly adhere to its moratorium that, that is in effect. Um, if we deviate from any, if any of those commitments, it has to be um, run through EPA. And I would strongly advise us uh, to take any action seriously. Now, one thing we will do, and I, I want to talk to the board about, is that once we get that final order, as I said earlier, uh, we should look at the moratorium and restructure some of the wording on it. Uh, not back off on the strictness of it, but so it reflects appropriately 
uh, what the EPA order wants us to do. Um, because we also have to look at the fact that uh, a constraint on the mor moratorium and new connections is a constraint on our revenue. And that has got to be balanced. But right now, until we get that 67500 out, that, that's firm. The board voted to accept that, and I, I hope the board continues to hold the ground on that. Uh, once that 67000 is out, we could release uh, a smaller amount, say 5,000 gallons, to one or two applicants, but that 5,000 gallons means that nothing else will be released until we remove 55,000 gallons. That's the 11 to 1 ratio. Um, with that said, I think I've, I've talked myself hoarse on the EPA order. I will turn that over to the, to the other board members for comment. Uh, start with you, Dan, eh? I understand where they're coming from. We're, we've gone too far. Now we're going to come back. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, um, again, I, I do have experience with the EPA and the private sector um, on several sides working with them on projects, and unfortunately I was involved in my company, that my previous one was involved in a very nasty lawsuit with the EPA. The EPA is not in the business to find you. The EPA is in business to work with you, help you find solutions to your problems. If you dem do not demonstrate um, due diligence and an effort to do so and work with them, they won't call you bluff, they'll just step in. And they, believe me, have, we have gotten off light on this. They have de definitely demonstrated in my eyes um, given Rockland an opportunity to work with them, and now it's up to us to demonstrate good faith. I agree. They're pretty specific on what they want. It's um, it's almost akin to a project plan for us. It gives us a good direction and what we need to do. Um, I have a question because the, the first item is due on August 1st, and that's submitting that plan and schedule for implementing that SSES project. Right. If, if you remember back in uh, May, we had asked Dave um, once we decided that, mm -hmm. once he said that ACOM wasn't uh, interested in doing that kind of work, that he said he could have a quick scope of work for us at the July meeting. That July meeting is next Wednesday, the 20th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Once we have that in that scope of work, I will write a letter with that scope of work attached to it, showing this is what we're doing. We're awaiting for bids, and I think that's all they would want at that time. Uh, once we see receive uh, or select the bidder at the August meeting, uh, then we could submit a timetable, and they're going to want to see the costs that we're with mm -hmm. the money that we'll be spending mm -hmm. um, in that I line. Just want to make sure that we meet that on this. Oh, first we'll, we'll meet that. I mean, I have no problem meeting that one way or the other. I mean, that that's a that's a very doable work item, and I believe the second one, which was September first. The updated scope of services, I believe, um, right PS already has the draft order and they're working on that, so we should see that. Right. So I'm not worried sure. about that. Okay. You had some other notes on that you wanted? Or? Um, a lot of these, I think, are my thoughts. Um, Go for it, please. So on the September, I guess, For the September 1st, the updated scope of services, I know it's not in the original CWMP, but they will allow us to expand that? To yes, we're going to, that's going to be an okay. addendum. Uh, I think Roy PS is working on that now. I'll touch base with them anyway. I have some other questions I want to talk to them on. Um, we're going to need a, a working session on, on how we're going to fund these things. Mm -hmm. Just all the operational right. aspects. Well, what, well, I think what we looked at is that as far as the I and I plan for the initial 67 dive, we have funding from uh, those approved projects that have already been approved. I just want to make sure we allocate that appropriate funds for that. But again, we won't know the final number till we see to see yes. that. Mm -hmm. uh, and in all fairness to Acon, they gave us a pricing in 2021. And I think everyone in the world knows what pricing is doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, lead times are, well, what's bothered me of anything is going to be the lead times to acquire materials, but it is what it is, and EPA's got to realize that, again, as long as we are, are demonstrating 
an effort to, to walk that way. Uh, I think we're all set. Um, I, I would like to verify the funding that we have. Um, maybe reach out to accounting and so forth. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, please do. Um, if you would, what, what I would look at is the take, what I would look at is just the approved projects, including perm rows. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the fees we expected? Who has paid? Absolutely no connections until they pay. Mm -hmm. In full. And then we, you'll have to double check with Dave what monies he has pending. Right. Uh, the big kick will be that digester because as you know, um, there's a new piping issue that came up, so we'll have to address that. Yeah, I think I do. But, I'll be happy to sit and talk with Dave. Okay, but the, the, the key side. is uh, the number one project is this INI. Because until the INI comes out, we cannot get revenue. That's right. And that has to be the number one goal. Agreed. Are they going to burn the sludge or are they going to still truck it out of here? Sludge is just an ongoing issue. I mean, I, the sludge prices are going through the roof. I, I remember reading uh, the beginning of the middle of last year that they expected sludge to go up the pricing 30 to 70 percent just this year. I think it's going to go up a lot more. Is, this, is the sludge? Right now, the sludge is handled uh, by our contract with Veolia. They pay for the sludge, but they allocated X amount, and that's before the, the uh, pandemic, and that was before EPA gave us this phosphorus order, a compliance order. Um, that phos phosphorus by nature of treatment uh, is going to generate an awful lot of sludge. It's going to be an override on, on their part. It's not fair to them to take it. Uh, last year we were paying them um, overage, if you wish, for what their monthly budget was for sludge. Anything over that, the sewer department's been covered, and I expect that to on go, keep on going. I mean, what's the, what's the stuff they brought over in uh, Quincy Point? That's uh, strictly like, MWRA. We yeah, can't touch that. Yeah, I mean, is that sludge? That's sludge. So we they got two methodologies they use. They burn the sludge, and they um, um, compress it into pellets. The pellets became its own environmental issue. Uh, what I would like to see is that we get the digesters, all four yeah. digesters, uh, crank into where they should be, because I believe that's going to be a great cost savings. But right now, they're also looking at stricter air emissions, which means it's going to affect the burning. Right now, we're grandfathered in on the air emissions permit. We don't have one, per se. I think we're going to end up with one once these new regs come into effect. But they're not... I think... Is scheduled for September 2024, September 2025. I'm not sure where I saw that. Right now, the um, it's out for comments and evaluation. I know that. But uh, I really, we have one place that takes our sludge, and that's Cinegro. And now uh, they shut down for two weeks every year. They did last year, and I don't know when or if they've already shut down this year. So that was that. They're in Rhode Island. I mean, sludge is such a volatile matter now that Canada used to take it. Canada's banned it. They won't take it anymore. Used to send soil, be able to send soil up there and burn the soil. You can't do that anymore. Remember Ben McGuire, what they did down there in the hill? Well, Ben McGuire used to burn, send it up to Canada. My company sent it up because we were a borderline Superfund site. And then luckily we got the our site cleaned up quick enough. But Bad McGuire is now in a, that's still a super fun fight. It's like that. No, I don't so know. scampering. But anyway, let's keep keep on our agenda. Any more discussion on EPA compliance? No, we're no. Good. Okay. The next item of discussion is the open superintendent position. Now, um, just for the record, uh, we received a letter today from the interim superintendent on his desires. What I want to do is not discuss or disclose the contents of that letter at this meeting until I can check uh, on uh, human resources what we can and can't do before we, we send in a reply to that. So what I'd like to do is just look at this as an open discussion on the position. Uh, is it you had a chance to look at the job description that 
you know, that each Stacy sent out and this? Yes. I didn't see it, no. Okay, that's a job description. Um, that's what went out for for um, discussion. Uh, went out to um, out for um, to, to, that Stacy submitted for the uh, the ads. What I want to do is a couple things, and I and I want some input from from both of you. I think one of the pitfalls that we're falling into is, for lack of a better word, communication. Who, who who's doing what? And I think it's a tough spot for a superintendent who technically reports to the Board of Sewer Commissioners, but he's a town employee and a department head under the, under the town. So what I'd like to do is a couple things. One, I'd like to first of all uh, continue with the ads. I want to reach out to Stacy, yes, or run those ads again. We have to fund them. Let's figure a thousand bucks a month on this. I've also reached out to Northeastern Wentworth Institute. And the other thing I want to bounce off you guys is uh, what is your opinion on going it, sending it out to headhunters? Uh, granted, they're probably going to give us the same response, but it gives us another median to get out. They have a bigger, uh, let's say, niche to dig into. The drawback is is that it's usually a ten percent of the salary, which in our case would be attempted with ten thousand dollar commitment. But if we find the right guy or girl, great. Uh, the other alternative that I want to bounce off of you off of you is that is this. Based on what I just said about the uh, reporting structure, what have you, we have a contract operators that look that handle the facility. Now, when uh, Rockland looks into, the citizens look into what Suez does for us, Suez, the Suez system is divided into two points. The facility itself, which is this area here, and the infrastructure, which is tech, called the collecting collection system. Veolia slash Suez is responsible for the facility, and I've said numerous times, they do a phenomenal job with what they have, and I'll never back off on that. Uh, this equipment that we have here is not even made anymore, 90% of it. They don't even make spare parts, so let's keep it going the way they do. It's a credit to them. And they can do that because they have a network available to them, being their supportive staff of the whole corporation of Veolia, engineers, what have you, that can help them troubleshoot. What I'm proposing is that we look at the same thing for the collection system. Uh, we got a big pie to eat with this administrative order. There's going to be a lot of engineering uh, required on this order. What I would like to propose, and I would like your permission to do, is I'd like to prepare a scope of work to go up to seal bid to Veolia and other companies to see if they'd be willing to take over. Uh, now, let me finish this in case I say it the wrong way. For them to take over for at least six months the interim superintendent's position and handle the the court the EPA order. When I say the uh, collection system, meaning I mean specifically that um, the administrative work administrative work here the paperwork whatever that is. Dave is currently doing it in 20, 10 hours. He says he needs 20. Okay, well, let's allocate 20 for that. And the rest is outside project oversight. As far as scopes of work that need to be done in the interim to save costs, I would write the scope of works. So I do not get compensated for that. But that's one task we'd have to take off. But what I'd like to do is prepare a scope of work uh, Send that out to review to a number of, of, of companies. Then have them all in here at one table at a commissioner's meeting and discuss it with a number of companies, like, much like we did with the facility study. Here's what we're thinking of doing. Do you have a problem with that? Do you think it would work? Now, keeping in mind that we pay a superintendent, 
let's say a salary plus benefits, let's throw everything into a lump sum and say 130,000, let's use $150,000 a year. Now, if we have that, a company such as Veolia that runs a facility, have them run a collection system, that $150,000 would be to run the collection system and prepare all these reports, prepare the scopes of work that can still go out to bid to other companies if, you know, if we want. It would be up to us. They would strictly be under our control. But it means we have to manage them. It means we have to make a commitment maybe twice a month to sit with them so we know what's going on rather than wait once a month or, or maybe have uh, a meeting once a week, a staff meeting with them once a week to, to keep the ground, keep things flowing. I don't know. I'm reaching out to you people to hear your report it, and maybe you don't want to discuss it now. Maybe you want time to digest that because the interim superintendent, the superintendent position is still an item for discussion uh, next week. So if anything, I really would like you to look at the job description in depth. And on the side, look at what Violia does for us here at the facility with this EPA order. I think we could do it with an engineering firm. Hopefully Viola would, I, I, Violia would take it all under one umbrella, would make it a hell of a lot easier. But where the collection system is a separate entity, you know, to me all holds are off. We've got a, you know. Now, when we would so they'll have they hire their own contractors. So well, no, that no, no, no. That's that's, that's what I want to work yeah. out with them. I don't know. What I want to do is prepare a scope of work, show it to you, and say, okay, here's what I'm thinking. We need between the three of us mark it up. Once we get it to a point that we feel, yeah, we kind of like this, ship it out to these potential bidders. Say, would you be interested in bidding on this? If you are, I would like you in at a meeting to get input from everyone all at once. We'll combine that input into a final scope of work, send it out to bid, and see what we get. To me, there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. We've looked for a superintendent. We're in the same boat. Um, a lot of businesses are. I think people are too damn lazy, my opinion. They got spoiled with this working at home bit. Um, and you know what, I'm not adverse to that with this position, but um, we're not getting the response we should. Uh, I think we go all out, send it out for to to have Stacy send it out again. Who knows? We may get a crackerjack. We may get someone in that makes my scope of work a moot point. Maybe we say we want to take another interim or keep Dave on as interim and and go with that. Yeah, do I make myself clear what so I'm trying to do? It sounds like what you want to do is take the the whole um, I and I in the EPA order and get the project manager for that. Basically, yeah. And I think that's a good idea because that's a great big chunk of work. It's a chunk of work that I think we're looking at it is very doable. I mean, like I said, they got off light, we got off light. Everything is doable, yes, but there's a lot of work to be done. Right. And having a project manager that has that overview, I think is a good idea. I think with the project manager with the norm of view reporting to us on a, on a weekly basis, I think would Yep. I think it would work. But I want you to think about it long and hard. I, 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 one thing I don't uh, want e either of you, either of you, or the public to perceive that I'm trying to dominate these meetings. I have a tendency to, to puke out my thoughts, and, and, and I don't mean to be forceful with it. What I'm looking for is input, believe it or not. Uh, I try to stress that every month with the public portion of the public uh, opinion on it, uh, much of the chagrin of many, but I, I think it's important. I mean, this is a town elected board. Um, people should have their input on it. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'd be willing to entertain uh, input from the community on the, the superintendent's position. Um, so that said, I'd like to see this new idea mapped out a little bit mm -hmm. on, on what exactly we would be expecting. What I've been doing is an algorithm, you know, um, what if, what if, and I'd like to put that down in, in a writing format. Well, yeah, it should be a listing very similar to the job description for the superintendent. Right, it basically took it from that. And then mark this up 
oh. what's coming off so that we have a better idea of what we're looking for yes there if is, we go in that direction what we may have to do is because there is an involved in the job um, some hands-on activity on the streets mm -hmm. so that would be above and beyond the project manager but if we got a project manager that has access to those talents he could call them in as needed yeah or work with the superintendent if we have a superintendent's position if we get a project manager I see, no, I see right. no need for both okay my personal opinion say, yeah uh, so let's map it out and okay and see do you have an objection with that no i mean we have the last say anyways yeah, but I, I want to, we do, but you know what, I want to see if anyone else, public-wise, or even Dave, has any input to it. Um, I don't imagine you'll like it, but um, I think we're just spinning our wheels right now. Well, I think we've had the, the request out for a superintendent for a long time. But you know what, and, and we're not getting the candidates it. that we're looking for. We dragged our feet in primarily mine because we had so many irons in the fire, and I'll be honest with you, I'll take full responsibility. I knew the CPA thing was coming down. I knew they weren't going to be messing around in that I was so gun shy of doing anything until I got that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure we were on ground. But I think with what we've seen now, with when I think as far as handling that order, I think we've got a good game plan in place. Uh, we, we got it spelled out what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Now it's just someone oh, make it yeah. happen. But I don't think that the person to make it happen can serve two masters. That, that's a dilemma I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally do not feel uh, Rockland is ready for a Department of Public Works. I think that would go against the grain of every resident in town. But that again, that is well, just my opinion. Right, and I and I don't I don't think we're looking at that. We need no. to get our EPA in order, our I and I in order. Um, I'll look again at this job description. Please see if it's really appropriate. Optional. Yeah. Um, and, and, then, and then there's a lot of things that I'm sure we could work out with Rick as far as the day to day. That if it's street oriented work, they would pick up. We pay them mm. on, on a contract override, whatever. Mm. But now on the school department, school, the schools down near Memorial Park, yeah. they're supposed to be knocking it down. Have they knocked that manhole out? Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to, I don't want to get off that yet. Oh, that's yeah. going to be a good discussion that I want to have uh, when it comes to that I and I work. And uh, one of the things I'm going to be talking about next next Wednesday is flow meters again. Uh, there's happened? been a hesitancy on flow mean? meters because of what it would say and what it would not say. And I think this is a Good example of why we need a flow meter. I, I think we, that's, that's our first priority. I thought we put in for one. We put in for a flow meter for the discharge. Yes. What I have been pushing for for a year is a what I was lack of better a portable flow meter. Oh. So when we check a pipe, we can say, okay, the magnetic flow meter is out there to say how much is going through now and go back and hit it afterwards, how much is going through out there work. Oh, There's been hesitancy about that because of the cost, but I think with this order, and one of the one things the EPA said in, in our first meeting that you guys were privy to is that we have no way of documenting. You say you remove five hundred thousand dollars, five hundred five thousand gallons of ionic. Where's the figures to show me before? Where's the figures to show me after? It's hearsay. Yes. This is the twenty first century. We have we're, we're there's engineering out there that make this happen. Everything has a price, it's going to come with a price, but you know what, if it gets us to be not fine, it's well worth it. But again, we're going to see what we have available for funds. Right. Now, we already have something set up for the Is funding discharge. already available for the discharge? What and I'm looking for is that? it? Uh, no, that's going to Did be a start fixed. With this? No, that's going to be fixed. That's fixed. That's going to be, because we they want us the final, they, see, we basically get our influence. Understood. That's the only thing. Yes. They want to know exactly what we're discharging. Yes. So that's going to be a permanent picture. What I'm looking for is an instrument that you could take, say you have an excavation at yes. the highway to, at the um, school. What exactly is coming out of that school? Okay. Now they threw a number, if you read the CW, the, uh, the thing said there's 130,000 gallons that coming out of that. Where are the numbers to verify that? There's none. Uh, they found a couple manholes. Okay. 
I don't doubt they found them because it's so old, but you know what? How about I put flow meters to find out what is actually coming out of there? Not to punish the school system in any way, but if it's above what they're permitted for, somebody's got to pay for that. And if it's if it's due to construction, we'll take it from there. But I think we should talk, definitely discuss the acquisition of foam meters. Yeah, we need them. Okay, anything more said on the superintendent position? No. We're going to discuss that further on next Wednesday night. So if you can, please review the job descriptions, and I'll try to have the document uh, sent out to you prior to, oh, I'm going to talk to you prior to, um, so you can mark it up, comment on, and if you want to do the thing, do so. While I'm thinking of sending it out, you've got to get a government email. A what? Government Apple. email. You have to go up to uh, the IT office. A government email? Yeah. yeah. All it's going to yeah. be is Dan DeRoss yeah. at rocklandgov, rockland-mass.gov. So any communications that sewer department has or what have you, it goes through the proper channels. Call Gene and IT, and I'll walk you through it. And I'll walk with you so you, you don't look too stupid. Hey, I had this done at work, but... No, it's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good CYA deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think you should do it. Great guys, that's all they did, set everything up. Okay, July do we 20. Have, before we move off of that, do we, um, can we get a copy of... Um, how Stacy has advertised this? Yeah, matter of fact, I think I did. I think, or I worked in my CC, you guys have her CC, you guys on that? I don't recall seeing the, ad, um, the advert. That gets so much stuff, I know. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll, um, I'll have, I'll contact Stacy again. I think I have it at home where she at, um, advertised it. Um, yeah, I'll come up with a list. Matter of fact, I'm going to write that down now. I'm going to come up with a list of um, headhunters. Headhunters, they go after everybody. Yeah, but you know what? I don't care if they get us a, a, the appropriate person. And again, project manager is what we're looking for at this point. Mm -hmm. um, Rick is having a hell of a time trying to just get someone mechanically inclined. So I, I know. They got to have their own problems because they're under contract too. Um, both of you saw what I submitted to the EPA for changes, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to look at that and compare it to what the draft order, see what compare to that. So with that said, uh, superintendent position covered? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a draft order. That's a draft order. Now with that draft order, uh, you, you understand what I want to do is get that finalized copy from the EPA, post it. Uh, I'll still talk about it at our monthly meeting because we have to, mm -hmm. and we're going to be working through it in our working sessions, but I want to give the, the public time to digest it, look at it, read it, and then if they want to ask questions, they can ask questions. Okay, stay here. Just stay here. Sherry, I'm going to turn this next part over to you. Okay. The list seat. of projects we wanted to. My thought is to just review this one more time, make sure we understand what's on the list, why it's on the list, what the status means. Okay. Get it. Um, what I worked up is kind of a format based on that draft yeah. EPA, so that if we maintain this properly, when it's time to submit those reports, it's done. Um, what I would also like to do is post it on our website, again, so yep. people can see it at any time. Have that be our main reference document, um, because I notice a lot of, I, mean, I yep. notice lists get made up when there's a need for it. Yep. If we have one main document, then there's no confusion. No, I think this, this list that you put out today was outstanding. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was correct. Uh, so Do we have... Go ahead. Okay, you know why don't we go through what we have yes. as far as approved. Um, so there's no doubt about that right now. Uh, okay, so what we have approved. And this is, the project is final, they're final. approved, they're connected. 
Don't but what it. we gotta make sure is that they're paid. That I don't know. Okay. Don't okay, see. but approved. Mm -hmm. Ten fifteen Hingham Street. So if everyone knows that was the um, the marijuana dispensary that was built on Hingham Street. Uh, I forget the name of the original applicants. Uh, they were approved for a sewer connection back. They do uh, have a connection. Yeah, they do have a connection. They were approved back in uh, 2020. Uh, but what happened is the state stepped in and there was some technicality on the number of licenses they had. So they in turn sold to another uh, distributor or dispensary and that the permit went with them. So they have, there's no change in flows. So we're just going to call that 1015 Hingham Street. Approved. So the question is, they have new owners, but we don't need to reapprove. No, we, we don't. They're again. approved. Okay, okay. Um, Lydia Square, that is the units down here on Concord Street, they are approved. We have received no fees from that. Kit, from that. And it's my understanding we're not going to. We're not going to. That was somehow put on and the And they're road. all connected? There's yes. Okay. Where's that? Lydia Square, you get down here, uh, Norman Street, Street, before Albion Street, Concord Street. It's a right. Go all the way to the very end. It's built up on what I should say. It's built up on a wetland. It's, it's a nice apartment building. complex down there. Nice building. It's probably going to sink. No, when I went down there, I saw the foundation cracking. Ooh. But um, okay, so Lydia Square. So we got 1015. Mm -hmm. Lydia Square. The new elementary school. The new new elementary school. We have no fees for that. And that's approved. That's approved. That's a municipal. What we want to do is I want to make note is I want to see a copy of their permit and what was the flow they were allocated. Now, it should not be any more than all the other schools combined. Now, with the elementary school connected, that's taking consideration to shutting down all the other schools. So, anything that opens again is additional flow, which is a no-no. From those buildings. The approval process. Right. Um, Monaghan Rink. Monaghan Rink is off of Forest Street. Uh, that was approved for the rink only, not the Lovell Academy. Mm -hmm. Lovell Academy is going through a septic system. Approved is Article 15 Brewery, which is a form of Kathy Corrigan's. They were approved and I believe paid. Now, Article, the Article 15 Brewery, I believe, is also a closed loop system, so there'll be no discharge, but they paid the INI fees. Um, approved, and I guess this is pending payment, uh, is Beachwood Estates. Who is that one? Beachwood Estates was approved back in 2010 uh, for a, 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 pro, a, a a project, I guess, through deaths, family arguments, what have you. Some of the property was not developed. They came in, I believe, in late 2020 and were approved for an additional, for some reason, <coughs> 1,980 gallon sticks in my mind. Uh, but they were approved. Um, so, but they have not paid yet. Uh, Dwyer Street. Dwyer Street was the apartment's off of South Douglas. They were approved. Uh, they say pending payment here. That may be the one you want to look at, Sherry. I don't know if they're paid. And we're going to need their money for the I, &I work. But they are approved. They, they went through the proper hearing and were approved. How long ago? They were approved uh, in 21, 2021. Uh, I believe when you just came on and just before, after you came on. Uh, 365 Concord Street, they have not paid. 365 Concord Street was approved for 40 units. Mm -hmm. um, they have since dropped down to, to 19 units. Uh, the board voted at one time to rescind their approval, but I guess we're, they're dropping down the number of units that approval carries over yada yada and legally so technically they're still approved but they have not paid yet i think they should be notified they have six months to do so along with beachwood along with beachwood 
uh, but that is for 19 homes and their original approval therefore would be less than the flow but their flow is calculated into what we have to remove and I'll go over that later um, on top of that is Primrose School yes Primrose School I explained Jay earlier that to avoid a lawsuit um, it was easier to approve them than go through the a long dragged out court case. Right now, that's all that is approved. Now, pending. At the, go ahead. Approved. At the point they make their payment of fees. Then they can connect. After we've removed our 67000 Right. No, no, no. The approved can connect before the 67000 Okay. That was the deal. Got it. But Got it. no more can come on until Got we it. remove that 67. So I want to make that clear to the public that the, 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 those that were approved were approved prior to July 1st, 2021, which is when we put the moratorium in effect. We gave everyone like a, a, a five month window to say, hey, a moratorium is coming. Get your, get your uh, applications in now if you want to be approved before that. These are the people that did do that, um, did appear before the board, did present their final plans, and therefore were approved. Right now, technically, we have no we have projects that are out there, but we have no one pending. I can shingle mill's kind of green here. Yeah. Sh shingle mill is not pending. Shingle mill is not, in my opinion, is not on any list. They have not presented a final plan. Um, if you read the regulations, there is and not just the town regulations, but EPA, Mass DEP, you cannot connect sewer in a zone A uh, area. Shingle Mill right now by DEP is in a, is a zone A. They are appealing that, and where they go with that is up to them. But uh, that, again, is a, if you, on the surface, it's a 40,000 gallon a day. We don't have that. So any... Anything on this list under future projects, we know they're out there, but they've not approached us. One, what, what I would like to do is, with this meeting here, this working session, is get through what do we want to quantify in the definition as approved, what yep. do we want to quantify as pending. So again, Sherry, why don't you take it through the general um, explanation of your draft, uh, and then we have the application. What I foresee is three, two lists. We can have three lists if you want. Approved, meaning you you can connect once we have the I and I available. Our current approved list is not applicable. We can create a pending list, or if you want to call it a waiting list, that people come in, make their case, present their final plans, and we can say yes. Uh, you're technically approved, award them a slot position with a flow, and once we have that flow amount available, they can connect. Yay, okay. Yes. So I think we have a so right now we have projects that are board approved and connected. We just right. talked about that. And we're going to get them on the website. Yep. We also have a group of projects that the board has approved. The and connection that. is pending payment. Right. That's, then we need another category that says the board is approved pending connection. And that's the wait list. Right. Or that's the wait, approved wait, list. wait list. Board approved Let's wait list, approved we'll call wait list. And after that wait list, um, they should come in with their final plans, mm -hmm. present their final plans with the final flow. We can give them their estimated fees and everything, nothing, no exchange of monies, uh, and approve it, assign them a slot on a, on a waiting list. So, so here's my thought. Let me just sure. let me just babble this out for a moment. That's what these are for. We have 
So I've given copies and we'll attach them to the minutes later. We have a moratorium waitlist procedures. Right. And we have a form S form and procedures. So what we have is ordinance and rules and we have a moratorium. And those documents tell us what we're gonna do. The procedures will tell us how we're gonna do it. Right. So your so your um, setting them on a wait list or uh -huh. signing them as slots yep. is what needs to be worked out for this wait list right. procedures. And so that going forward there's no question you can look at it and say Right. But here's what we're gonna get into some some we gotta play the um, algorithm game, the what if. Yes. No. Let's say we put them on a waiting list. Okay, you come to me, you are, you've got a project plan, you're gonna allocate, you need 5,000 gallons. Okay, once we have uh, the 67,000 removed, right? Yeah. So that we, we allocate 5,000 gallons to you. Number two on the list doesn't get okay to connect the 55,000 gallons comes out. The 5,000 gallons times the 11 to 1 ratio. Oh, so it goes up. So it goes up. Now the other caveat, and again, this with these working sessions are good for to bounce back and forth. What we could do, to, again, to, and what my concern is to generate revenue, what we could say is, okay, you know what? First go around after we get this 67,000 out, we're gonna generate, we're gonna release 10,000 gallons, okay? That'll probably give us two, maybe three uh, connections to come in, mm -hmm. right? But we take that money in and with that connected, once they pay their money, we can't let anyone else in until we remove 110,000 gallons by an hour. 100,000 gallons, uh, 11 to 1, 10,000 gallons is 111,000, 110,000. You miss some big, you miss some big projects coming up too. Yeah, well that's what we do. No, big, big projects. Well, the problem is these people have got to realize that we're not going to jump. If we don't have, if you come in to me with a project that's just used shingle mill, of 40,000 gallons a day, and all I've got is is 10,000 gallons a day, guess what? And I got them. Now, here's, here's, here's the caveat we're going to run into, and here's where the pressure could come in. We've got some small-time developers who want, say two of them, want 10,000 gallons, 5,000 each. Now we've got a big guy that's waiting. I need 40,000 gallons a day, okay. But he now is going to remove 440,000 gallons. That's going to take a long time to find. So do we say to him, okay, because you're bigger, you go ahead of these guys? Or who say, once these guys remove their 110,000 gallons, we'll allow you to connect. We'll take your money. But until we find that 400,000, 424,000 gallons, no one else can connect. See, that's, that's where we're going to run into the, Problem. the problems. Because you have that in Church Street, that building that burnt down. That factory? Okay, this is a good example. Then we can't use names, but say an apartment complex is in there. That's say they want to, we're talking about Park Street, say they want to put 50 units in there. Say 100 bedrooms times 110. Okay. And then on the other side, times they, 11. They tore down that other building. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's just it's, the ones that pending. Yeah. So how, this is what, now the EPA is going to be watching this. Mm -hmm. We have a moratorium in place. You can't add unless you remove. They flat out told us you are over capacity. Forget this drought. Our numbers are going to look ridiculously low. Yeah. The numbers are the numbers. Yeah. Our track record is that. So this is what we've got to be aware of as we go down the road. Is that, okay, we're going to get the 67 thou out. We've identified it. We know where it is. We're going to have the money to get it. We're going to get that out. Mm -hmm. Now that's out. How much we want to release? We want to release 5,000 or 10,000. Again, it's not for letting out now. But say, let's use another. If we have 5,000, 
okay, we could let two or three new connections, small time connections in. Small time connections, I'm talking apartment buildings, 20, you know, whatever. But we so get that real linking, big hit up. You're linking the connections to how much flow they're going to That's exactly what it is. They're not you're looking not at connections. The connections to the I and I removed. Well, you have to. We cannot add oh. unless we have it. So until we remove that I, until, if you want to put 5,000 in, you've got to get me 55,000 okay. out. All right. Then that's, that's, that's what the moratorium says. Yeah. And that's what the EPA is looking for. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. So then. And if I'm wrong, so there's me. So there's no question, though, of if you have the small guy and the big guy, have you removed your I and I? Yes, okay. No. Okay. But once we establish, let's say it. You're 5,000, you're 5,000, you're one, you're two, I'm three, and I'm 40,000. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at giving you a million and a quarter. He's only looking at giving you 200,000 each. Mm -hmm. Am I going to buy my way in? I, I would say no. I would say no. I, I would say but no. But this is what you were going to get. I would say, you know, the first person on the list, have you removed your 55,000? And once yes we come no. to you, Answer is no, you wait. Second person on the list. Right. That's what they're looking at. That's, I, let's write it up and see if it passes. Well, it's up to us. What if test? But the, the, the thing is, okay, now you're going to get the big developer, and you know you're going to get, we're going to get pressure from it. And that's a lot of money. But then, are we going to go run into the EPA with every developer we have? And now, again, if we, here's, a, here's my but, problem. Here's my problem. If you do it once, you've set a precedent. Yeah, no, 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 no. But if they've paid their fees, we have the money to All remove right. the I and I. So right, it should fall right in the It line. should, right. What I'm saying is, okay, if problem. these guys that the have the 10,000. The guy's putting the pressure on us. Right, he's not going to want to wait. Well, well, you're going to have to wait. Yes. And once you, and if that 40,000 is available, if you're third on the list, yeah, you're going to get your 40,000. That may mean that. Four, five, and six may have to wait one, two years till we forget and remove that four hundred thousand, or we improve this facility or no, offload it. He doesn't connect until we remove the four hundred thousand. The I and I is tied to his connection. See, let's lock this out. That's what I'm saying. If, yeah. if we release, which he's paid us for, if we release the 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 five thousand gallons, mm -hmm. okay. Good Technically, we have to go 155,000 gallons. So, okay, I released to you 5,000 gallons. Well, it's two things. Which back it up. He pays us right. to remove 55,000. Right. He waits until the 55,000 is removed. No, he can connect while we chase it down. Yeah, okay. Because by then, we okay. should have identified we should sources. Be able to do it. Because now, remember, we've no. got an SSES study. That's identified another 219,000 gallons we can go after. Yeah. So I take his money, I look at that 153,000 gallons above the 67. You follow where I get those numbers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if the public knows, the SSES study identified 219,000 gallons. 67,500 gallons of that is in sewer lines and manhole covers. The others were in laterals and in the sewer mains. Laterals, I put off to the back burner because that is the homeowner's responsibility. We have to go on private property, and I want to see if there's programs out there so we don't have to hit the homeowner. Yeah, that's so that's why I opted to go after that 67,500. That leaves the remaining 153,000 gallons of I and I out there. So if Applicant A comes to me with 5,000 gallons. That means we have to remove 55,000 gallons. So we take your money, and out of that 153,000, we find 55,000 gallons in I and I we can remove. Mm -hmm. But you can connect. But well, we're going to chase. You're connecting. You paid. But we're going to chase that 55,000. That's when it's up to the sewer commission to say. We're not going to, we're going to keep track of those numbers because we have to verify them. We're not going to release 5,000 to you until his 55 come out. Now, once his 55 come out, we say, okay, you can connect. 
Now we only have, instead of 150,000 gallons, we have 100,000 gallons. We take your money and remove 55,000 gallons of that. Meanwhile, hopefully with the CWMP addendum, we've found other sources we can go after that's easier. It may be as easy as putting a flow meter on that high school, new school, and find out they can line the pipes. Mm. And you know what, if they take out 100,000 gallons, Damn. great, but you know what, right now, saying it in that draft report, there's nothing verifying, there's 100,000 gallons there. So unless you can verify it, it don't exist. Am I making sense? Am I making so, sense to you out there? <laughs> Am I making so sense? the wait list person has to wait until the prior yes. person's fifty-five thousand is up. Nine nine has been removed. But once that five thousand becomes available, you can connect. We're going to take your money, and then we're going to chase that fifty-five thousand gallons, so you can connect. Then I'm going to take your money. Why? Why would you not take the fifty-five out before he connects? Before he connects, why keep him waiting tied, longer than he tied has? to the project. Why? Because. Because you don't know, remember that I and I, it's a lot of I and I work, you've got to do more water times. Right now, technically, we're coming into a high water period in October, November, December, so we may not be up to do I and I work. Yes. I see them in town lining the pipes up in the Ashmont. Yeah, we could, we could, that's a good way to go, is line the pipe. If you line the pipes, it's stronger. But anyway, it, and again, that's, we got to talk this out before we start tackling that um, moratorium modifications. But I like what you've got here as far as the lists. Yeah, we need to think it up. We need to map it out. I think we got to do this list, and I think we got to. I'd like you to present that at the Monday, Wednesday's meeting, mm -hmm. um, and then we've got to clarify exactly how we're going to handle uh, new further connections. We can't keep a stranglehold on development or um, revenue, right? Because we need the money. So what 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 I'm hoping to do again? Let's get that one set, and we cannot balk. Nothing can be done until that sixty-seven thousand right. comes up. Nothing Absolutely happens nothing. until that. So we up. have a window of opportunity to think and plan this out, and I think that's what these working sessions are, are good for. We could do be enter it like this face to face. Uh, but um, that, that's where I see where we're at. But again, as far as uh, waiting list, we have a waiting list, we, and I think that should be updated. I don't think Shingle Mill belongs on. They can go on. They can go on a a future list. I think it. I think it belongs on the future list. It's it's. But they're not going to go through they, other boards. Right, so they, that they, makes it a future right, project. Right, but they have not. So, if, so you not. both know you were not on the board at the time. Uh, Shingle Mill came to us. Uh, we gave them approval to go to zoning with conditions. Zoning told them to go back to sewer and water and get formal approval. They never came back. So they do not have formal approval to come back. So there is no approvals that they are not on a waiting list. For this list of projects, I know the EPA is looking for a list of pending projects. Now, okay, let's talk about pending projects for a minute. Pending projects, I don't think we should consider them pending unless they're submitted to Form K. No, no. That, yeah. what I, I would what? like to. I would like to suggest that we work on a sewer commissioner's form. The Form K means that it is a project that's in town with other boards. Right. Um, we've been. I've been working on this form for the sewer department. That kind of maps out the flow for the sewer department. And that's better than that. Yeah. Yep, you have it in here. Yeah. Um, and then that is when it gets onto our Well, schools. that's what we did with the ordinance. So you're going to tie that into the ordinance, yes, right? Yes, I have. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, while yes. we're on the ordinance, you know that Bob, you saw Bob Galvin's email um, that said you, we should make it rules and regulations so it doesn't yes. have to go with town vote. So I think yes. that should be on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes. Make yes. that the ordinance a rules and regulations. Yeah. And we should also remove any dollar fees that are mentioned there and just refer to the current fee schedule. Then we don't have to keep going back to them. Okay. I like this idea. The date of fees, you have 30 days once they're approved. 
a bunch of proof that what, once we tell you your project's a go, you have 30 days to fill with that cash, no extension. If you want an extension, you go to the next slot on the list till we move the next person up. Mm -hmm. So, working on this project list, approved, waiting for authorization, that's our wait list. Right. Pending approval are those projects that, that we have just not there. reviewed. Right, that are just out there that we think are coming down the pipeline. Um, nothing's etched in stone. We don't care about them until they come in before us. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Well, that's kind of vague because now you're pulling in a lot of these others that, as you said, don't really belong. Well, let's say, that, okay, so. let's, let's take for example why I'm saying that. Uh, one of the lists I saw um, had Union Point and A.W. Perry on it. Mm -hmm. Are we going to tie up flow waiting 20 no. years for those no. people? No. 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 Are they out there? Yeah, they're out there. But so perhaps the pending approval are the ones that are working their way through town boards. So right. Know okay. Yeah, We're, those have been presented to say pending approval should be those that have gone through planning and zoning, but have not yet come to sewer. You know, that may be it. Simple as that. Yeah. They've been through uh, planning, sewer, con con. Let's say they've applied to. Yeah, applied to planning. In ZBA. And we're not, we, we don't care if they reply, but we, you know what? They're potentially out there and they could come to us. That's a, that's a serious project. They're, yeah. They're in the boards. So they're in the board. Rather than not. Because I've not seen anything for Union Point. I've not seen anything for, for A.W. Perry. So why should we hold up potential no, flaw? we don't want to. We don't want to. We haven't seen anything. What are counts, no. One thing we do we've got to clarify is when when the EPA is look what they're looking at is this order is not connections they're looking at flow. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So that moratorium is for flow additional flow. We are not allowing any additional flow until we get that sixty seven thousand out. The existing stubs no exit stubs don't count. And by stubs you mean set that. Yeah. The stub is there, the, the connect to. Yeah, but you, you can't connect to it until it comes to a Right, service. like yeah. take for example that you mentioned Park Street and Howard. There's stubs there, but they're yes. not going to connect it to where the flow of the yellow. If not, we're just chasing that tail. So just because pipes are there doesn't mean that yeah. they're approved or anything. They right. still go through the whole process. Right. Okay, yeah, understood. All right, can we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Time I'm, done. Done. I'm done with that. I will work up this list for next week's meeting. Okay, so let's come up with an action. I'm going to come up with a list of headhunters and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take, we're each going to take a look at that job description. Mm -hmm. We're all going to think about um, superintendent versus a project manager. Yeah. And we'll bring that up for discussion that night. Uh, as far as the letter from the interim superintendent, I want to discuss that with. Um, Human resources, that may be an executive session matter. Uh, but again, you know, the one thing about this moratorium and what we're about to undertake in the town's going to be, the town has got to understand, uh, and I, I'm sure they do, we, we cannot correct what went on. We, we, can only, we cannot fix what went on. We can only correct it and move forward, and it's going to take us some time. There's going to be some pain involved, and I'm sure that rate study is going to hit people. Understand that you know we'll be as open as we can, and we're going to try to work with you in every every step of the way. But the only way we can get there is to comply with that EPA order, and they're going to make sure we do comply. And we've got to make us as a board has got to make sure we comply. With that said, let's come up with a date for the next meeting, um, working session. Yeah, you have July 27th, I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm going to say July 27th, uh, I have a doctor's appointment next Tuesday. Uh, we have a meeting that Wednesday night the 20th, 
we may, depending on my discussion with human resources, want to have an executive session prior to that. I'll get back to you on that. But why don't we plan on um, the 27th? And let's, how do you want to work this year? You want to set an agenda um, Wednesday night, next Wednesday night? Or do we want to just pick out what, what else we had on that? Um, well, I would say if something comes up from next Wednesday, we can do that, but we can certainly... Um, okay, what are the big things we have? We've got to, we've got to finalize, finalize the ordinance. Yeah. We've got to work on... Okay, once we get to draft, once we get the final order, we can work on the um, moratorium. I think we should keep the superintendent vacancy an active discussion at every meeting mm -hmm. until we get that worked out. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big thing today was that draft and the, um, the list. The project list. Uh, the project list to me, um, let's take one more vote to finalize the um, approved list. Okay, so it's formal. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that the approved list connect consists of 1015 Ham Street, Lydia Square, the new elementary school, and the closing of the uh, others, the Monaghan Rink, Article 15, Dwyer Street, um. pending approved pending their payment is Beachwood Estates, 365 Concord Street. So again, that's 1015 Hingham, Lydia Square, the elementary school, Moynihan Rink, Article 15 Brewery, Beachwood Estates, Dwyer Street, 365 Concord Street. Primrose. And Primrose, excuse me, yeah. and Primrose School. I made the motion. I have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor, Mr. DeRoss? Yes. Ms. Valley? Yes. Mr. Heshit is a yes. So the final, one more time, the final approved rate that, a list that can connect immediately once they have paid in full, 1015 Hingham, Lydia Square, Elementary School, Monaghan Rink, Article 15 Brewery, Beachwood Estates, Dwyer Street, 365 Concord. We're going to be locking up the plans in a few minutes. And we're, going to, we're all done. Okay. Um, did you sign that for me, Dan? Which, what? The paperwork on the table? Why? Well, you signed that up yesterday. Yeah, no, and that was a nice. I like it. Okay. And Primrose. And Primrose. Yes. So they can connect immediately. Uh, the moratorium doesn't pertain to them once they are all paid in full. Okay. That is a final vote that can go up on the website. Yes. Sure, you're going to look at uh, finding out from accounting who's paid, who has not paid. Correct. And you're going to look at what we have available to us in the INI account. Correct. That we can actually physically have. Correct. Okay. With that said, I'll take a motion to end the meeting. Uh, can I, before we sure. do that, uh, next Wednesday's meeting, July 20th, is that in person or Zoom? Because Zoom, as far as I know. I got, I got a confusing email today from uh, from Town Hall. Um, if I interpreted that right, let me let me read it to you while I have it. Yeah, it was discussed at the Board of Selectmen meeting last night, and that's why I'm asking. Okay, no, okay, talk to me. What did they say last night? Um, it seems it's a little unclear whether right. the Zoom will be allowed to continue. And I know that some other boards are making the assumption that it will not continue. Okay, um, here's what I have from, from uh, Divisional Legal Services, Department of Massachusetts Revenue. On February 16, 2022, the governor signed into law Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, extending certain pandemic policy measures. This bill authorized continuation of remote meetings and public access under the open meeting law and other remote provisions including Massachusetts nonprofit corporations until July 15, 2022. Mm -hmm. Both branches of the legislature separately passed further extensions that would extend these provisions, including allowance for remote public meetings under the open meeting law into 2023. 
However, at this point, the differences between, between, between these two bills have not yet been resolved, so no extension beyond July 15th has been enacted. The differing versions must be removed by Friday, July 15th, 2022, to prevent the lapse. Okay, so I think with that said, um, the meeting, unless we get different, is in person. I would agree. I know. Okay, so unless we hear different, um, I, I'll hold off posting the meeting until Monday of next week uh, to meet the requirements of the open meeting law. Um, and that will determine if they're, if it's open to Zoom. Okay. But I think as of now, we've got to assume. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, right now, we're assuming that it is public meeting in person. I will put something up on uh, on the different Facebook websites if I hear different. I can use a little boys' room. Okay. Well, I'll take a motion to resolve and agree in the meeting. We got a motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Ashton, yes.